Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spellweaver. My name is Boltor, and today's the day we finally... Well, I guess technically Monday was the day, but, you know, work and life gets in the way. But anyway, we finally have steam. Yes, the fire has raised the water temperature to a certain point that it is about... No, wait. Wrong steam. Redo. <laughs> we were fi Spellweaver's finally been released on Steam, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, game platforms, PC gaming platforms, you know, for people to find and play new games. You, you all know what Steam is. You're playing the game. You obviously know what Steam is, but... <laughs> um, I wanted to... I, every single time there's a new big content patch, and this is a really big one, um, I wanted to I wanted to do a, a video about, like, the changes, my opinions on the changes, and especially the new cards that we, um, that everyone either loves or hates, depending on, you know, who you are or, um, you know whatnot. So, I wanted to just dive into the collection real quick and, you know, just kind of talk about, oh, this is interesting, I'm glad they did this, I hate that they did this, you know. Um, I'm going to, so I'm going to go through all the changes and then I'm going to talk about the incarnate cards, okay? I'm going to do that kind of as a whole different section because um, the review or the overview of the, um, the overview of the changed cards are going to be relatively quick. But the, I want to do a little bit more in-depth on the Incarnates. So, first things first, we'll start with order because that's how it is on the list that I have here. So, first things first, Griffin Rider. Um, Griffin Rider was, at one point, so hilariously bad that it was the worst card in Spellweaver. Now, it's better. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's a great card. But the fact that it now, um, it had, originally it was like 2 speed 2, um, which was crap, but then they gave it speed 3, and now it's got ranged, which means that it can actually trade pretty effectively with certain things. I still don't, I still really don't think that it's worth paying 4 mana for, but you know, it's better. They simply just gave it, you know, straight upgraded it. They didn't change many of, or any of its stats. I don't, not sure if they changed the mana cost. I don't think they did. But, it is a knight. I believe that interacts with some other, or at least one other card. But anyway, if not, it has ranged, so that means it can trade with elves, it can trade with um, Firebrand Shaman, at the very least. That's one that comes to my mind. It can it trades really well, so it's probably a better Trials card, but I don't really do Trials, so I, you know, don't quote me on that. So next, next thing's Touch of Light. Originally this was an instant speed spell, give creature, for one mana, one order, give a creature plus one, plus one, and life bound until end of turn. So, it, you'd use it to, as a surprise tactic, you'd use it to gain some life, but now it's just one mana, put a might emblem on, on an allied creature. I preferred its old form, in all honesty. I mean, I understand that they did this so that maybe it would see play, maybe it would be different, but I honestly think the one turn of plus one plus one to life bound was better than the permanent might emblem. You can feel free to disagree with me in the comments below, but personally, I like Touch of Light the way it was. Um, right now, I mean, this is pretty much just the worst word of vigor right now in order. And at least Touch of Light gave it something different. You know, it was a temporary boost, but it also gave Life Bound, which you could use on, like, a big creature to swing and gain a bunch of life. If you needed the life, you could use it to just trade more effectively. Um, but, I mean, in all reality, not a huge change, you know what I mean? Um, didn't really see play before, it's not going to see play now. Another big one, Ray of Righteousness. Used to be destroy an enemy creature enemy creature with attack 3 or more. Used to be before that, it was non-order creature, which was a pain. But now it's destroy an enemy creature with attack 3 or more, or destroy an enemy spell. Which is huge, because before, um, before order had absolutely no spell removal. And it actually got two spell removal cards, which we'll see in, um, we'll see in just a minute. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty big. Um, Electrostatic Storm, um, what did they, they changed the name of, um, it used to be, um, Restless Tombs, now it's like, I think they call it, like, Tombs of the Damned or something like that, but anyway, um, things like that used to just kind of, you used to have to play either Nature or Wisdom to get rid of them, but now... Now you can actually, there's some actual diversity in what you can play, but we'll, that, that's something I'll continue on with later. Really excited about this card. It's a straight upgrade. They didn't change the cost or anything. It's just a straight upgrade. It gave it another ability, another usefulness. 
And I've always enjoyed cards that have multiple usefulnesses. I did enjoy playing Druid in um, Hearthstone. Too bad Druid was pretty much almost never, you know, viable to play. So, anyway, um, I'm not going to talk about the Namir's Blessing change, just because um, basically it's it was just clarified. Um, to clarified to, to say spells, hero skills, cards, or card powers. Um, it was a little ambiguous before, and it did lead to some confusion, but really the card itself didn't change at all. So the next big one is Dwarf Spellbreaker. Now this is this replaces a um, a card called Dwarf Musketeer, which was a two mana, one uh, one level, two one speed two with ranged. It was a soldier, I believe. He's still a soldier. So all the dwarf really did was trade in his gun for um, an axe and a shield. So. Dwarf Spellbreaker has plus one speed as long as the enemy hero controls a spell. So it's a three speed for two mana. So it's basically an elf, elven warrior for order as long as your opponent controls a spell. And as long as you can push through the damage, then he gets to destroy that spell. Or a spell. You get to choose if your opponent has multiple spells in play. This is another spell hate card for um, order that they originally had none of, which... I'm really excited about this card. I really like Dwarf Spellbreaker, and he's definitely being included in um, this Mono Order deck that I'm going to spotlight. I think I'm going to record that video after this one, but anyway. So, the last one to talk about when it comes to changes in, um, when it, um, when it comes to changes in order is a nerf, pretty much, to Path of Transcendence. Um, it used to be one mana, now it's two mana. I can't remember if it was really changed all that much before, but anyway. At the end of the turn, put a creature under Path of... Um, you may put a creature you control under Path of Transcendence. So originally what it was is it would leave the field at the be at the end of your turn and come back at the start of your turn, basically allowing it to dodge removal, which was a big deal. When Path leaves the field, return all creatures under, under it onto the field, exhausted, under your control, and put a Might Emblem on the creature. Now it actually used to bring them back um, ready so that they could actually attack that turn. So they would leave, they would come back, attack, and then leave again, and it was a huge pain, especially well, with Blood Seeking Mutant, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So, you're going to have to excuse the sniffling, I'm still kind of getting over a cold. Um, but this, the other, the trade-off is, I mean, they, they nerfed his, his its um, ability, but what they did is they gave it so that you could sacrifice the path by paying a mana, and you get to draw a card. So not only do you get to draw a card, but all the creatures that were, um, like, un that were under it get to come out into play. So if your opponent's swinging with the Dwarf Spellbreaker, you know, if your opponent is attacking with a Dwarf Spellbreaker and you're like, well, I can't block it anyway, let me sacrifice the path, draw the card, get the creatures out, and then I can block. So, you know, there's, there is a little bit of control over it. Um, next guy, or next we're going to move switch over to Wisdom, and we're going to just go ahead and look at probably my favorite creature in the game. I know he doesn't see, see a lot of play, but I just love this card. I always have. I play him whenever I can. Um, but anyway, Jin of Wishes. I think he got bumped up to three mana instead of two. Um, he, I don't quote me on that, but I'm. But he did get buffed up from a two five, a two four to a two five. So he's he can block and he's a bit harder to kill. From four to five in Spellweaver is kind of a big deal. It's kind of sorta depending on what you're playing against. It's not that big a deal against Rage because. Dragon Fire and, and Red Dragon still kills something with 4 health as easily as it does with 5 health. But anyway, so um, he still digs for spells and artifacts, um, and the rest, you know, kind of gets sent back. So basically, just a minor um, tweak to his stats, nothing that big. Same thing, I believe, with Dust Titan. Um, the same stats pretty much apply. I think he starts off with 3 energy now instead of 4. I believe that's pretty much his only change. Um, which is big because when you when you played him, it used to be that you could shock two creatures. So it's basically when this creature enters the battlefield, shock two creatures. Um, now he can only shock one immediately, which gives you less of a tempo swing. But still a very strong creature for still a very good effect. I feel still gets stronger every turn uh, and any time he gains energy. So not a huge deal to worry about there. Um, one of the big ones. Gnome Power Engineer. Gnome Power Engineer used to do, um, used to read like this. When Gnome Power Engineer enters the field, you may destroy an artifact or spell. 
if you do um, an allied creature, you may have an allied creature gain energy equal to that card's cost. So what they did, they changed it from spell or artifact to just artifact, kind of fitting for the flavor of the card. And now it's a t it's two energy flat. You destroy a one cost artifact, you destroy a 10 cost artifact, I don't think there is one, but maybe when, maybe you'll watch this video two years down the line when there is a 10 cost artifact. No matter what, a cr one of your creatures can gain two energy. That's it. It's a flat rate, which in my opinion is better because I'm glad that they're kind of diversifying spell and artifact hate. Like I said, back, um, back before this, you had to play Wisdom for Known Power Engineer or Nature for Test of Time and Venerated Unicorn which one of those we'll be talking about in the, um, next up. But now it seems every class or every aspect is getting either spell or artifact hate. Some of them I think have both. I think nature still has both. But I like that it's a little diversified because now you don't have, you're not vulnerable to spells and artifacts if you're not playing um, wisdom and nature. Back in the day, you basically had to play one of the two if you wanted to be able to deal with spells and artifacts, so I'm a fan of this. I'm, but not. I mean, I'm not a, is necessarily a fan of this change, but I'm a fan of the fact that this change is part of a more overarching change to Spellweaver in general. Not going to go over the wording change to sleep because again, it's just a clarification. Charged, or all right, all right. Um, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the change was here. Um, I believe it, did it start out with zero energy? I mean, at one point it was, it started out with one, and then I think they changed it to zero, and now I believe it's back to one. Um, but it still um, kind of saves up energy to give to someone else. Um, you play it, and then you play, um, then you follow it up next turn with a, where is he? Foundry Engineer. The Foundry Engineer gains this, the energy off of the, um, the charged R8. So, I believe that's the change. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Um... I don't really have like a a change log. I just have a list of cards that were changed, and I don't necessarily. I haven't really memorized the stats of every card. So, um, and the last one I believe is um, Jorill's Silencer. Now, this is a card that went from this is a card that over the year, um, over the year, I guess, of Spellweaver has gone from completely unplayable to holy shit, this is defining the meta. To back to, eh, you know, probably won't play it. Um, Whenever an enemy hero plays a non-shrine card, cancel that card, basically, they don't get the effect, or it does, if it's a creature, it doesn't enter the field. And Jural Silencer loses energy equal to that card's base cost. Then, if it has no energy, sacrifice it. Um, the way I understand the change, and again, you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. The way I understand the way the change that did this was it affects, it loses energy based on its um, base cost. There are ca some cards in Spellweaver that have um, costs that you get to kind of, you know, tweak, like, I don't know, I think they got rid of Dreadful Nightmares, but anyway. Um, it used to be however much mana you paid for it, so it could counter one big thing or a bunch of really small things. Um, and it was, I believe at one point you had to actually be able to pay, like if it has three energy and you play a four mana card, it doesn't just cancel it and then sacrifice itself. Um, before it was, um, you know, if you played a four mana spell and didn't have enough energy to cancel it, it just didn't cancel it, uh, as I recall. But, um, I believe this is a really minor change. If I can't even remember, <laughs> if I can't even realize what the change is, it can't be that big a deal. So, again, not a huge, it, this card kind of was not all that playable, and that this, cha um, didn't really change it. So next things for, or next things we're going to go right into, um, Nature, which just has some quick ones. Um, Neva, Child of the Forest. Um, her cooldown is now four, you know, up from three. So you have to wait an additional turn before you derp elves onto the board. Or if you, you know, derp combo. Um, Summoner Druid is another one. Originally, I believe he was a zero three. No. Um, hmm. I'm almost... Um, Basically, as I recall, I can't remember exactly what his stats were before, but he's a um, he's a one two now. I think he was either a one one or like an o two or something. No, because he could block. No, I believe he didn't have any attack before, as I recall. Yeah, and again, I, I've, 
as people who have been following my channel for a while know, it's been a while since I made videos, so it's been a little bit. So I I've been playing Spellweaver on and off during that time, but there's so much going on in my life that I just couldn't, you know, do it consistently. That's the reason for the pause in videos. But so I didn't. Um, I haven't been able to keep up to date on every single change, but as I recall, he didn't used to have that one attack, but now he does so. Um, Word of Vigor, which we just talked about. Select a creature for each of your nature levels. Those creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So it used to be give them might counters. It used to be each creature, uh, um, for each nature level you had, you could give a creature a might emblem, which was big because it was permanent. Um, so Word of Vigor, it seems to be kind of, um, is definitely more temporary. Kind, of, it's, I guess it's more meant to be kind of like a, um, Ambush, ambush Strike is supposed to be like one creature gets pumped up by two. This is kind of two creatures pumped up by one, even though it can be more than two creatures, but you get my point. It's kind of spreading it around a bit more. Venerated Unicorn used to read, whenever vener or when Venerated Unicorn enters the field, you may destroy a spell or artifact. Now it's just a spell. Um, the same stats, nothing else changed. It's just spell instead of spell slash artifact. Um, and the last one, it's a card that was more of a fun card anyway, but um, Grand Reunion. Used to read, at the end of your turn, look at the top five cards of your deck. You may put a creature from among them into play. Now it's just Fairy, Elf, Plant, Spirit, which is the win condition for Grand Reunion. So, um, used to be able to fetch any creature. I think it was like any creature below level, like level two or below or something like that. But now it's just a Fairy, Elf, Plant, or Spirit. Um, so that's nature. Uh, real quick, there are um, some, some minor changes to rage. Um, uh, the first one, the, uh, the epic burning rage, um, has the exact same effect. Only now it's one damage to you every turn at the end of your turn, as opposed to two damage to you at the start of your turn, which makes the card much more playable. Um, I really think this thing. I really think rage um, mid range is going to be even more of a thing. It was still kind of pretty strong, pretty good, um, but now I think Rage mid-range is gotten a lot better, but because of the change to this, which I'm perfectly fine with, because I really enjoy Rage mid-range. I really enjoy mid-range decks in general. Um, I always liked playing mid-range decks, no matter what, you know, card game I'm playing, so anyway, um, the last card that got changed in Rage is Ruination. I don't know if this, the costs got changed for ruination at all because this card never saw play but it's destroy all artifacts so four mana two rage just nuke the board of artifacts can destroy all of your opponent's dark portals all their lamps is a fear all of their totems all of their um implants just everything gone wipe the board which i'm perfectly fine with i'm perfectly fine with a you know destroy all artifacts card even if it is kind of one that's probably never going to see any play. Next, we've got some big ones to Dominion. The, the biggest one, Lord Karthas, Death Speaker. When, it used to read, when Lord Karthas enters the field to destroy an enemy creature. That's it. Now it's only four or less, which I'm not entirely sure how I feel about, because Karthas used to be the only hard removal in the game that could target anything. But I understand the reason for this change, primarily because... Um, well, when Karthas did do that, um, Undead Hydra, Dread Knight, um, you know, Spectral R right, or, um, the Sun Chaser R right, um, to an extent, the big, big creatures that you invested a lot of mana in weren't really worth playing. Why? Because they're just like, oh, that's a cute creature you have. <clears throat> There's a Karthas here, guy's dead. So this makes bigger creatures more viable to play by with the Karthas nerf, which I'm per which I guess I'm fine with. Um, again, it's a situation where I'm not entirely fine with the card change, but in the overarching scheme, I'm fine with it. You know what I mean? Like I like with Gnome Power Engineer, the card change itself, I'm not too happy with, but the fact that it has kind of a a, a rippling effect in the meta and the game itself. I can see why they did it, and I'm glad that it's going to have that impact. Um, vampirism, another change. Again, I'm not 100% sure if the cost changed at all, but it used to be at the start of your turn, lose... Um, well, let me put it this way. 
they changed it. They nerfed it into the ground to nerf a deck called Vamp, um, Vamp Lamp, which was um, Vampirism plus Lamp of Fear. Um, you'd swing in for five damage, gain five life if you, with one lamp alone, and then it would turn back into an artifact. You wouldn't lose life because you don't have any creatures, and then would come back out. So um, I believe they changed Vampirism back to the way it was um, before. Though I, made my, um, I believe this is the exact same effect it had before. Um, a while, um, before this change, it was like up to three creatures or something like that. Um, anyway, this is back to the way it used to be, and I'm really glad because I really enjoyed this card. And I'm hoping it kind of finds its way back into the meta. Because I miss my Vamp Lamp deck. <laughs> Lamp doesn't really all that playable, but if Vampirism is, you know, I'll, I'll take that. Um, do 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 Power Surge is the next one. Why don't I just do... Oh, there it is. Power Surge used to read 2 mana, 1 Dominion, gain an empty mana crystal. That's it. So if you do it late game, guess what? It was crap. If you do it early game, it was okay. It was, still wasn't as good as New Horizons, but... Now Power Surge, um, much akin to Hearthstone's Wild Growth. 2 mana, you gain an empty mana crystal. Then, if you have 5 or more mana crystals, draw a card. Um... I'm actually pretty okay with this. I'm not 100% sure Power Surge will see a lot of play. Um, just because, like I said, um, ah, what's it called? New Horizons is just that much better. But hey, maybe a mono Dominion deck with the craziness that is the Dominion Incarnate, which again, we'll get to in a minute. Um, maybe this is actually playable. I mean, at least it's two mana cycle a card now. You know what I mean? Um, do, 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 Silver Blade. Warrior used to be 2 speed, now she's 3 speed, um, which is really good because now she can block elves, most elves. Um, Helm of Dominion is now 2 Dominion levels as opposed to two, 1 Dominion and 1 generic, still the same exact effect. Um, Drela, 2 Dominion levels now instead of 1 and 2 generic, and she's now a human. I think she was a vampire or something irrelevant before, I know she wasn't an elf. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, you know, but i almost positive she wasn't an elf, which is the only, one of the only two synergies, so. Um, and, the l oh, the big one. Um, where is he? There he is. Bloodseeking Mutant used to be four mana, two, um, one dominion, one generic, three, three. When Bloodseeking Mutant enters the battlefield, put a weakness emblem on a non-vampire creature. And, um, and and at the start of the turn. So he used to do that. He used to get bigger every turn while crippling your opponent's board. He was really, really good. Um, don't let anyone fool you. He was good. Especially when you abused him with um, Path of Transcendence. And, you know, popped him in and out. And just it was just ridiculous. It was pure ridiculousness. But anyway. Um, now it is whenever a creature with a weakness emblem dies... You put a Might Emblem on Bloodseeking Mutant. Um, he did. He is cheaper because his effect isn't as powerful. But um, you can interact. You can or his new hero power or his new power um, interacts with Cathedral of Night. Um, you guys are gonna hate me, but there's probably other weak. Oh, you can you can implant your opponent's creatures so that they get the weakness emblems on them, and then um, kill off those creatures so he gets bigger or. You take a creed, you know, you take something with Helm of Dominion, gets the weakness emblem on it, and then you can maybe sacrifice it to Stronghold Metropolis, and um, Bloodseeking Mutant gets bigger. So he's a fun, interesting new card, but you know, they really, really, as someone who used to play against this card a lot, really needed this change, and I'm so glad they did it. Um, last one, one of my other favorite cards, Bloodwell Matriarch, is now um, it used to be Dominion Dominion generic now it's just dominion generic generic so a little bit more splashable which i'm very happy about because i love cards that steal your opponent's graveyard you know what i mean so those are the um those are the changes to pre-existing cards um now we'll talk about the incarnates the big ones the ones that are the new six new cards that came out with the steam release so the first one valor sworn incarnate one mana one order its attack and health are equal to your order level, which is good because order is one of those decks that not only likes to have a lot of levels in order, but also um, have a lot of levels and, you know, be mono order. As a, with the exception of the, um, 
with the exception of um, this, the Dominion, um, or actually, I'm sorry, Corruption Order Soldiers, um, this could probably find its home in Angels, because it's a very good early game card, because um, on turn one, it's a 1-1 speed two, which isn't great, but it's not bad on turn one. It trades with goblins, right? Um, but as the, as the game grows on, he can actually grow. You know what I mean? He can actually get good. Um, so, he's good early game. He's good late game. I mean, he's not the strongest incarnate, which we'll talk about in a minute, but he's pretty good, you know? Not bad. Not great. Um, Rune Light Incarnate. This is a card I really wanted to like. I just don't really think it's going to do a whole lot of anything. Um, two mana, one, one wisdom level. Its attack and HP are equal to its energy, um, like the Spectral Alright um, card in Wisdom that used to have the exact same effect. Um, at the start of the turn, gain an energy, so he gets bigger every turn. And he doesn't take damage in the traditional sense. Um, when he takes damage, he loses that much energy instead. So if he takes 3 damage, he loses 3 energy. So... In essence, you're dealing three damage to his health because his health goes down, but you're not, you know what I mean? It doesn't actually deal, it's not a damage, it doesn't become a damaged creature, so which might come become relevant as more cards are released. So, interesting effect. Um, oh, I'm sorry, there is one other, there's one other card. Oh, I skipped all over right over corruption. Hang on. Um, getting ahead of myself. I'm just so eager, you know what I mean? Um, Hands from Beyond, I believe that card was removed from the game, but now it's back. Enemy creatures have minus one speed to a minimum of one. Um, Restless Tombs is now, um, it's now Tombs of the Damned, so they did a name change, but now it's when Tomb of the Damned enters a field, leaves a field, and at the start of the turn, summon a zombie legionnaire. It used to be just once per turn, summon a zombie legionnaire. So now it's better, and hopefully we'll actually get to see more of it as outside of the um, soldier's deck. And the last one, the one that I was referencing that made me remember that I skipped over this, is Herald of Despair, which was a card that was brand new a little while ago. It's one of the newer cards. Um, when Herald of Despair enters the field, you may have a creature, artifact, or spell lose all energy, which was its effect before. So that can kill, outright kill Runelit um, Incarnate. Um, but it now has another ability. Two mana, sacrifice him. Each hero sacrifices an artifact. So now... Um, Corruption, which had no means of destroying spells or artifacts, now has means of destroying at least an artifact. Hey, progress, right? Okay, so back to the incarnates. I'm, I'm sorry. You, those of you who have watched my channel for a while know I'm an idiot. Those of you who have, um, who are brand new to my channel, guess what? I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, so, um, Rune Incarnate, okay, not great. I don't really think it's going to see a lot of play. The thing that makes Valus for an Incarnate playable is the fact that it's one mana. I don't think two mana is really... Unless you're playing a an energy-based deck, and then he becomes your, man, your main beat stick. Um, if you're not flooding the board with 80,000 golems, you know what I mean? Next, we move on to what I believe, and a lot, a lot of people seem to believe, are is the worst of the Incarnates. Three mana, three levels. Not only are you paying more... But her her effect is just kind of bad. I mean, you're playing so much more for such a mediocre effect. Her attack and HP are equal to the number of creatures you control. Okay. I guess. It doesn't even have three speed. If it was three speed, maybe. But it's only two speed. So, they can make her weaker by swarming, by reducing creatures on the number of creatures on the board. Knight Escort. Or not Knight Escort. Knight... Oh, I forget the exact name. Let me just... This guy, does, Knight Recruiter, doesn't see any play. And he's significantly cheaper and fits perfectly in the, um, in the archetype that he would fit in. He, he summons soldiers and he gets bigger from soldiers. So he's, you think he would be perfect in a soldier deck, right? No. Because the whole idea of being bigger the more creatures there are on the field just doesn't work in Spellweaver right now. So if he doesn't see play and he's three mana one level, then there's no way that Life Force Incarnate is going to see any play. You know what I mean? Even if you get to add a creature from your graveyard to your hand 
at the start of your turn. And it's not even a creature you choose, it's a random creature. So she is by far, and I agree with, I believe Jodo Fuzz and, oh, I'm blanking on the last name, did a, they discussed this, and they overwhelmingly agreed that Life Force Incarnate is the worst, and I have to agree with them. Next, we move on to Flameborn Incarnate, which um, is interesting, to say the least. So he's a 2-mana, 1 level. Um, Flameborn in uh, Incarnate's attack and HP are equal to the level of the enemy hero. So if you're playing against someone who's like a control deck, where they want a lot of levels because they're going into different things, then he's big. And here's the thing that gets Flameborn Incarnate into the playable... I mean, he's not great, but he's playable, right? especially for new players who don't have access to all the cards. He's got Fire Breathing, which is a magic term, but I'll explain it. He's got one pay one mana, make him one attack bigger until end of turn, right? He can So if you pay four mana, he becomes four attack bigger. So he has a way to augment his attack, despite the fact that his attack is dependent on something your opponent's doing. Um, so he's actually... You know, he's not as situational as the rest of the Incarnates because you can manipulate his attack. You can decide, he's like a lot like, um, he's kind of like, um, Power Seeker. Pay mana, make him bigger, um, until end of turn, which I'm perfectly fine with. This guy, um, doesn't see a whole lot of play, but that's because, um, he doesn't really fit with Dominion, what Dominion is trying to do, and he's not really... He's on the low end of the power creep for elves, and he is an elf, so that's basically where he would see. Um, I mean, he's this guy's not great. He's not all better than a lot of other rage cards, but you know, he might you might play a couple copies of him just because um, of his fire breathing ability. You know what I mean? You play him, he sticks around. Next turn, he can attack. Um, you know, it's it's late game. You and your opponent are both kind of in top deck mode. You top deck him. Suddenly you have and you have like ten mana to work with. Boom! You pay that ten mana. He's ten attack bigger. He can be a late game threat in those situations where you and your opponent are both top decking. Now, you don't ever want to be in a position where you and your opponent are both top decking, but it happens. So he might actually find a niche kind of to fill. I'm going to go ahead and skip over Dominion because we, we're going to have to talk a lot about him. Um. The Deathbound Incarnate. This is a this the um, conceptually this guy's really good, in my opinion. No, in, in practice, no. <laughs> in theory, he's awesome. In reality, no. In application, not so much. Three mana, two levels. Um, his he deals damage in the form of decaying cards. So he doesn't deal damage to your opponent's health. He makes your opponent discard cards in the top of their deck. Um, as a in form of damage. His attack and HP are equal to the number of creature cards in your opponent's deck, which can be really good if you're playing against something like Elf Rush, which plays a lot of creatures, or it can be really bad against something like Control, which doesn't play as many creatures. So, and he's supposed to be, um, you're trying to mill Control decks, you don't really try to mill, um, or you try to decay Control deck, decay Control decks, yeah, that's what I said, excuse me. Um, you don't really try and decay aggro decks so I don't really th this guy might just become the most important card in the mill deck but right now there aren't any mill decks there are people who are trying to make mill decks work and failing miserably but hope I'm I'm always been a fond of or a fan of mill decks I've made people rage out extremely hard by playing mill decks <laughs> um, so he the mid concept of a mill deck is something I welcome but we don't have a mill deck in um, Spellweaver right now, which sucks, but it's probably it's we're probably going to be getting a decent one down the line here soon, so we'll see what happens. So, onto the big one, onto the one everyone's been talking about, onto the one that has the most power. Ironically, it's Power Lust Incarnate. Three mana, one Dominion. Power Lust Incarnate. Its attack and HP are equal to your number of mana crystals. So. Late game, he comes down with, um, or late game, he comes down, you know, with, um, he comes down when you've got a lot of health or a lot of mana, um, he becomes super good, super big. Um, his speed are equal to your dominion levels, which are, is also good. Um, the thing about him that gives him the most power is that his potential to be force speed. 
none of these, every other one of these guys has their speed locked in. You know what I mean? He has the power to be a 10, 10 speed four. In theory, if you wanted to be this ridiculous and as inconsistent as this would be, you could, in theory, go up to a point where you have 20 mana and four dominion levels and um, one nature level because you need nature level to pull this off. And you could, using Neva, the basic nature hero, you could play him, give him swift with 21 mana, make him a 20-20 speed 4 that swings for game. That could happen. That's a thing that could happen. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, it's not a potential. It's not anywhere near the potential of anything that any of these other incarnates can do. The fact that you can manipulate his speed is a big deal, um, because speed is such a huge thing about Spellweaver. A lot of people have already talked this card to death, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But the fact that you can do that to this card is just ridiculous. The fact that um, you could. I mean, the fact that he can come out at least, his he, the lowest you'll ever see him out is, um, I guess, technically a speed 1-2-2, two, 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 because if you use the Spark of Initiative to get him out a turn early. But the fact that he can just come out as such a ridiculously big creature, and I mean, like, something like Flameborn Incarnate could come out with um, come, come out really big, and so could Phallusaur Incarnate, but they don't come around anywhere near the amount of power that you could give Powerless Incarnate again. The irony is not lost on me. Holy crap, this card. This card is going to be one of the bigger but the meta-defining cards in Spellweaver right now. Just because um, he fits so perfectly in, as curve-wise, and just the fact that you can manipulate his speed, you know what I mean? And you manipulate his speed, you don't invest like anything in particular, like anything special for his, for his to manipulate his speed, you know what I mean? Or his, or his health. You're, you want more mana crystals, you want more levels to play more stuff anyway. So the fact that you basically, he just gets bigger the later the game goes on, and not having to survive turns and everything to get bigger, like, um, like, um, not that one, like Runelet Incarnate does, it's the whole idea that by basically just doing what you're already doing by gaining more mana and everything, he gets enormous. I think that's really what gets people going, and the fact that he has the potential to be speed four. Maybe model, I've said it before, maybe model Dominion, like, aggro or tempo or mid-range or something becomes a thing. If we had a, if we had a mono aspect mid-range for all six of the aspects, that'd be really cool, in my opinion. But, anyway. A lot of people have caught, talked this card to death, and there's really not much else I can do to say it, other than it's the this, this potential for ridiculous stats and speed are, well, ridiculous. Well, and that's going to kind of do it for me for this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs com thumbs up, comment, subscribe. The whole nine yards were, um, if you're new new to the game, welcome to Spellweaver. Welcome to my channel. If, you're, um, if you've been watching my channel and wondering where the hell my videos have been, <laughs> well, I said it. Um, life kind of gets in the way, as a lot of you, I'm sure, understand. Um, I had a few things that just basically sucked all my time. And I just couldn't bring, by the time I was done with them, I just couldn't bring myself to make videos. Um, I just didn't have the energy for it. I didn't have the mind. Because, you know, when you've been, you know, it's been a long, stressful day, the last thing you want to do is kind of sit down and think for a half hour, hour, deal with um, finicky computer programs and stuff. And you just want to sit down and you just want to unwind. You just want to forget, you know, the world around you. So that's basically been my life. But now things are better. Um, I'm ha I have a little bit more free time that I can use to make videos and so and this you know now is a good time to start making videos again because the the game is changing we're getting so many more players and everything so at any rate um, I don't like to ramble even though I end up doing it after pretty much every video so uh, if you guys like the video again thumbs up comment subscribe I make this channel for free I don't get paid for it by anyone I'm not even the devs um, so I make this channel for free. I make it for you guys. I make it for the Spellweaver community. Um, so the more you guys do to spread my channel, you know, the more my channel grows. So I don't pay people to spend to circulate it like some of the more, you know, so like some of the ten billion subscribers um, YouTubers do. But at any rate, again, I'm rambling. So 
I'm going to go ahead and sign off right now. I, I think I'm going to record maybe another video or two before I call it a day, but if not, um, I really enjoy it. I'm, I'm enjoying getting back into videos. I'm really enjoying doing this again. I'm really enjoying Spellweaver. Um, I'm really enjoying, you know, the changes and everything, and I'm just enjoying life more now. So um, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. May the cards rise to meet you and bring good RNG to your enemies' enemies.